Hey, it's Norm from Test. I'm here at Oculus Connect 2, where one of the big themes is undoubtedly content for virtual reality. We've seen a bunch of rendered interactive game content, but I also want to check out what people are doing with 360 degree video content. So I'm going to chat with two companies who are working in that space. Come on. So I'm here with Daniel, and you're with Video Stitch. Uh, you guys are uh, creating content and creating a system, a workflow for real-time stitching yes, of 360 exactly. video. So uh, tell us about a little bit about your rig and what, what's the process. OK, so exactly, we're Video Stitch. What we do is, is stitching software. Obviously, what you see here is a rig with lots of GoPros in it. You know, it could be any camera, as long as you have Lots of cameras in there shooting all directions. The end result is lots of raw footage. You know, lots of raw footage, every angle, up and down, all the sides. What you do is the, the output of the signal goes into our stitching box. We have our software running, and the software does the live stitching. And you can imagine that post-production stitching is also complicated, but you have the time to do it. Right. It's not real time. The live stitching is, a, is a, no, a whole other ballpark, because you have to do it on the fly. So you imagine there's a whole different process involved with it. Absolutely. So what, yeah, sure. What Video Stitch does is actually that, live stitching. So I can put on, for example, an Oculus headset right now and see uh, myself wearing yes. it because uh, you're ingesting all this real-time footage. For, and frankly, with exactly. so many GoPros, it's a lot of video. Yes, this is actually our demo rig where, um, where it's stereoscopic live streaming. Uh, we don't uh, give this to our customers just yet. So uh, we demoed this the first time at SIGGRAPH a couple of weeks ago. Uh, which also got lots of positive reactions, you know, also from the, the Google Jump team was there. So there's lots of positive reactions to it because it's just cool technology. That's also what, we're, what makes us passionate, you know, doing this live 3D. Uh, but it also brings uh, difficulties. And um, our current software suite, Vahana, that's what we call the software that, that does the live stitching because we also have post-prod software. But Vahana currently is, is 2D. And now we're trying to, you know, step up the plate and make it 3D, 360. And is this, do, do developers and, and producers have to buy both the hardware to ingest that footage and then also the software? Or what's, what's the hardware that's involved? No, uh, the hardware, we're actually uh, reselling hardware as well, you know, so um, we don't sell, um, so we are a software company, you know, right. Video Stitch sells the stitching software. Mm. Uh, we do have, of course, lots of expertise with different rigs, uh, different models, different makes. Also, uh, there's different uh, volume involved, so you can get a three rig or a four camera rig up to 14, you know. So the software works with any kind of rig or input, actually. Nice. Up to 14 cameras, I imagine, high quality, like high bit rate from each, uh, as long as you have a live feed HDMI out. Yes, but the, the thing you have to take into account is the more cameras you put on there, the more uh, hassle or difficult it is to actually shoot with it. Sure. Yesterday, we've been uh, together with Upload VR. We're doing some nice filming, shooting some footage here of Connect2. Mm -hmm. So the highlights will be on Upload VR soon, uh, which will be post-production, obviously, so not live stitching. Yeah, there are solutions for post-processing of 360 video. You're obviously doing both that and real-time. And it really makes sense that this can complement that uh, yes. in the field. If you have a director who's filming 360 video yep. and just wants to get a sense of how to block out a scene, yes. they can use this and then bring in a different system or store it differently and then post-process. Hey, that's, that's exactly. Lo there was a lot of interest from exactly those kind of people for this. Yeah, so that's very nice. You know, if we can partner up with those kind of uh, production companies, we would love to because in the end, that's that what you know. It's a tool which, which makes it so much easier for uh, for a director to just see what's happening on set like that. So that's only one application. Uh, and in the end, you know, if you uh, maybe in one year, two years, you can actually see live events in VR, you know, with people from all over the world. So that's, uh, that's what, what we're working up to. And this is actually the first step in that process. And I'm uh, really proud to be part of that, so. Awesome, thank you so much. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you as well. Thanks. Thanks. So I'm here with Arthur from Jaunt. And Arthur, you founded Jaunt. Uh, how long ago was this? About two and a half years ago. For two and a half years, you guys have been producing some really interesting experimentations with 360 degree video, stereoscopic video. And at Oculus Connect, you guys are showing off some hardware that you've also developed. But first of all, let's talk about the, the video and the production workflow. What are the challenges of just shooting 360 video to get stereoscopic, good quality video for virtual reality? Well, a lot of people 
you know, have to build a camera first, and usually they do that out of GoPros. And GoPros are really not designed for that, so it, it's a very error-prone project, and you know, there's a lot of pitfalls in doing that. Plus, the, the quality of the GoPro footage is not always as good as you want, especially in naturally lit environments, like inside. So we decided to design a camera that was specifically built for VR, and that's the John Duan camera that you're looking at. When you think about camera systems, uh, you can do not 360, just stereoscopic, two big cameras, and we've seen rigs with like up to two red cameras next to each other. With GoPros, you're limited by their sensor, their lenses, their dynamic range. What about the sensors that you're putting and the camera systems that you put into your jaunt camera uh, are optimized for 360? So f first of all, the sensor is big. It's a one-inch sensor. It's like four times the size of a GoPro, so you capture much more light. And secondly, it's a global shutter sensor, so there's no rolling shutter artifacts. They're all fully synchronized, so you know, you, if you have fast-moving objects or if you're in a car, you don't get all the distortions that I would bring with it normally. It's high dynamic range, so we can support HDR. High frame rate, up to 120 frames per second. We can record up to 20 hours of footage. We can do time-lapse photography. We also have a version that's going to come out next year that uses a 20 megapixel sensor, so you can do super high resolution time-lapse photography, which would be great for nature footage. Um, so this is basically just a platform that was designed specifically for VR, trying to address all the issues that people have with sort of existing GoPro-based systems. You have uh, 24 cameras right in the system around the perimeter of it. What determine, and from your experience, how many degrees you want each camera to cover to assist in the stitching? Is that just because of you know the software? How much actual video you get out of it? What are the what are the factors that determine that? So it's a complex equation that you have to work out, but. For us, we wanted to make sure that each point in space is covered by at least three cameras, and that helps you with the stitching. Uh, and it also determines how close you can get to the camera. So with this camera, you can get up to three feet. If you get closer, then it's hard to complete, computationally stitch it together. Right? So up to three feet or three feet and further, it's all done automatically. If you get closer, you might need to do some hand editing. So the, the way uh, cinematographers are going to think about filming video with this, that also affects the post-processing and the computation, just how they blocked out their shots? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everything's new, right? I mean, you, you're kind of a cameraman, you kind of have lights, you kind of, you know, the actors have, there can't be a director in the shot. Yeah. So ev everything has to be rethought, and that's exciting and challenging at the same time. In your, you know, over the past two and a half years of filming with the rigs that you guys have built and editing and building a workflow, what types of video do you find most interesting? Uh, is it landscapes? Is it near field? Uh, is it within a certain, you know, action within a certain field of view? What is interesting, do you think? Uh, it's evolving rapidly, right? I mean, we did concerts, for example. That's interesting. But I, I can buy a ticket to go to the concert. What I can do is buy a ticket to be on the beach with the, with the artist, right? So I think those kinds of experiences are more interesting than a concert. You know, also things that have some a narrative track, you know, a, a, a narrator. Those are far more interesting than just being in the 16th Chapel, right? I want somebody there, somebody famous, to guide me around and say, look up there, look up here, you know, have you, have you seen this, right? That, that kind of content is much more compelling and people stay in it much longer than just like, I'm in the 16th Chapel. Can the hardware and workflow be also used to have this camera roaming and not stationary, or is it really just for stationary? Yes, we've, we've done drone footage, we've done uh, you know, stabilizers, you know, steady cam type things, we've done it on segways. It's all possible. The challenge is more like how, how do you control the motion so that people don't get nauseated? Right. Is it single direction? Is there acceleration? Uh, linear motion. Linear motion is what we think works. Um, and then how about sound? Sound is also important for recording. So what are you doing with spatial sound? So we do record sound with the camera, but it's sort of uh, FYI, you know, it's a, a, a track you can use for synchronization or, or uh, et cetera. But we do have an external microphone. I don't have it with me right now, a tetrahedral microphone, which records the sound field. And that then gets spliced in later with the video so that you can create fully s spherical audio. Now, if uh, this is a camera rig that people can eventually lease, rent, buy, and produce their own videos, what is the workflow going to be like? You know, are, what type of software are they going to use, and, and how complicated is it to edit a video in 360? So the, 
the camera is not for sale. It's only available to partners. Um, the idea is that you get a camera, you shoot with it, you upload the content into the cloud and render it out. Now you can render it out as a ProRes file or an EXR file, which is very high resolution, and you can use that as the master to edit. And you just use Final Cut or, or After Effects or, or what, what have you, standard off-the-shelf tools. Then once you've got a final master, you re-upload that into the cloud where it can be reprocessed for distribution. So it's a very simple workflow, but it's very effective. Cool, and hopefully we'll see a lot more video shot with jaunt cameras in the future. Thank you so much, Arthur. It's great to meet you. Thanks.